I'm Patrick Davidson. On this episode of Recaps, we're sharing another personal history that CAPS recorded for the Museum of Ventura County's presentation, Ventura County, the place we call home. The exhibition is, is trying to grab a concept which is home and try to showcase that home is a lot more than what we think it is. So for some people it's a place, for some people it's memories, for some people it's other people. So I wanted this to be more of a conversation between you both and myself and I wanted to open it up and just ask each of you, well, what does home mean to you? Now, now you're bringing us into the emotional space <laughs> of home. I think what you touched on is a lot of what we think, not so much one area that we live in, but when we think, for me at least, when I think about the greater expanse of my ancestry and my ancestors, where they lived was there was no privatized land in that area so they had a lot of open space and to me that's home having that open space being able to walk on the same areas that they've walked and they've been and we see and often find right, remnants of the past even thousands of years ago things come up artifacts are found and it's really i can't describe the feeling i guess to pick up or maybe have found a shell that's either hundreds or thousands of years old and to understand that this existed when it was just all of our people. What a lot of times to me is closing my eyes and the smells and the scents and the sounds I will get from the ocean or in the mountains because obviously in inland now we have a lot of outside noises that are not reminiscent to my spirit of what I feel home is. <clears throat> so things that didn't exist before and being able to hear the water, which we have very little of, but listening to the trickling of the water or the trees, the wind, the animal sounds, all that is just fills my spirit. It makes me so happy to think that a lot of these things still exist today. They've, you know, they're, they're not extinct, but we do have things that are extinct. And to really think about how do we further care for, for the land that we live on so that we have a home. Um, so for me, there's a lot of emotion within that. And I didn't live in the time my grandmother, but because I felt I spent so much time with her and she told me so many things, I feel like I get a really good picture and sense of what it must have been like. So the sense of being really small and things that she would make at home, sometimes herbs or things from the ground that she would go right out and pick and make teas from and make medicine from smelled really, really bad but it always made us feel better instantly. So I remember that. So a lot of times when we're out hiking, I'm trying to find those same things that I can't always find. You can't go to a store and just find these things and you can't go to a pharmacy and find it. So um, I think scent is a huge, the scent and hearing is a huge part of what home is because you, it takes you back to those very old memories and sometimes forgotten memories are, woken up because you remember that scent and what it meant to be in that point in time. So I can only imagine, I, I listened to a lot of her stories of growing up, so to me that's part of home also because she's shared that with me. I didn't exist in those times, but she was setting the stage for when we came along to remind us of what home was. It's kind of the same for me, I think of home of anywhere that we can gather with tribal members and we're with land and animals sometimes we're not always able to be outside because like i said we are a landless tribes so gathering is very dependent on people opening up their homes or spaces to us so even like even if we are at somebody's house and we're all together and we're working on one one project that our ancestors did for those seven or eight hours it's like we're in our own village and we don't got to worry about the outside world or what we have to do on a daily basis. It's just us together focusing on the craft and laughing and having fun and talking about all of our stories. So to me, home is anywhere we can get together. Because it just, like if you go onto a reservation, it's a completely different feeling than being in a city. Has the concept of home changed for you through time? Um. 
I think it has in some ways. Uh, I only imagine, I've seen a lot change in my time, so I can only imagine, you know, when I listen to my grandma's stories and see pictures from those times, like a lot of the pictures are here and you realize, wow, a lot really has changed. And I often say, if somebody dropped us off in this space 300 years ago, we would be lost. We would have no idea where we are, where we were, because the landscape would look completely different. Um, and I think I've only lived away from home once for five years. Um, but there was a big difference. Like I felt like I was so far away. I always tell people like, I can feel it in my stomach. I can feel it but I'm so far away from home and trying to connect on other pieces of land, going and hiking and trying to be, for us, it's always a point of going out, even if we're hiking on the ocean, asking the ancestors there, you know, thanking them for allowing us to be on their space. We are visitors in that space. Um, and that's part of keeping home alive as we carry those traditions with us, no matter where we're at but still always longing to kind of come back and be home home. And like I said, it's not what necessarily a house, but to be able to walk on certain pieces of land that we know our ancestors lived on for a fact that those were their villages, those were their areas, is really calming and it's just a feeling I can't, I can't really describe the feeling completely but it's something that gives me the most peace, the most happiness, the most healing. Yeah, when we did live away from here for five years, we were in a city city. <laughs> so being in a concrete jungle is one thing, and then on top of it, feeling so disconnected. And I remember talking to my elder and she said, well, it's because your spirits never lived there. Of course you wouldn't be completely happy there. And it never really clicked until she said that because I always just said like, I didn't like it. I didn't feel connected to it. And I always just wanted to come back home. So once we had that conversation, I was like, well, that actually does make a lot of sense. My spirit has never, our spirits have never lived there. So we don't have that connection. So when you came back after those five years being in the, you know, uh, concrete jungle, how had anything changed for you coming back to the place you felt at home? I got scared by a lot of the development <laughs> because we came back and we're like, whoa, that's not there, that's not there, that's not there. And then you see all the signs like, you know, development coming soon. So it was, it kind of felt sad because you, you drive by all these places that were once open and they have six story buildings, you know, so it, it is slowly becoming more developed. And, and I feel like that just, whether you come from here or not, being disconnected from the land is not necessarily a good thing for everybody to endure every single day, day in and day out. I'm gonna change the topic a little bit. Just, uh, what is your favorite memory with your mom that reminds you of home? Going to the beach. <laughs> We spent all summer at the beach and I would, we always collected shells and she would always tell us like we would make shell bead money or different things. So even now I still collect, we have tons of shells all over the yard. It hasn't stopped. <laughs> what about of you with, with your daughter? Probably, that's uh, gonna make me emotional. Probably being able to share the stories that my grandma shared with me, because like I said, these these lands, a lot of them are destroyed. They no longer look like what they used to. So being able to share the stories that my grandma shared with me of her upbringing, or even the stories that I had with her is priceless because we can never go back in time, but we always have that information to share and carry us through sometimes, or, you know, sometimes your darker days, or you can be really happy, but feel that sense of missing or longing for something that is no longer there. So being able to reflect on those stories and those scents and the things that they used to do, like most recently, we've had a lot of um, earthquakes, which I was ter terrified of. And my grandmother really liked them. She enjoyed them and she understood. And we also have some folklore in our Shumash tradition about earthquakes. So kind of knowing that kind of makes you feel like we're okay, but there are some things going on. So an understanding of there's so many different concepts to what home is, but overall, um, having these stories and these memories are priceless because we know 
not everybody shares those same stories. Not everybody knows those same stories. And it's so important to our culture and our history to continue to pass those on. Um, and somebody recently told me, it's amazing to know that you would know this because that information, that means it traveled down hundreds, if not thousands of years. And to us, it's just like, well, yeah, because you're supposed to share that information. But I know that that's not common or that's not um, the norm for everybody. These types, not everything was always shared with everybody continuously had that importance of these stories. Yeah, like we had a professor, he, and he asked me, like, where are you getting your information? And I looked at him and I said, it's through oral tradition. And you're not <laughs> everybody's going to find this in a book about us. <laughs> um. Do you um, okay? So we, you you both are talking about the ancestors and the importance of those traditions and memories. Uh, looking towards the future, how do you think uh, that concept of home or those? memories are going to evolve hmm. it's a little scary um i think at least for me and my family i think that we will carry those traditions forward i don't know the further we advance in time and the, the more change we have the more we know that it does change with our people also um the more we continue to make big changes to who and what we are um starts ending that tradition and the history that's always been there. So it scares me a little bit because I do see some of that happening now. Um, I do think as long as I'm alive, that concept of home will always be the same. And I do think it will be with my family. I, I just don't know beyond that if it, if it will be. And most recently we had a um, ceremony. We were remembering ancestors from 199 years ago and that was really emotional because I stop to think that I didn't live back then, but we know the story of what happened. Um, and I don't know that they would ever believe that we would be here 199 years later, still singing and praying for them and having holding ceremony and remembering them, saying their names. And to me, that's such a beautiful concept. And that that's home, right? You don't forget those people that, that were here. Those connections are huge. I, I, I have a question, and I don't know if this is the place to ask the question. So please feel free to um, to let me know. Um, but I, I'm curious to know, and again, I, I don't know if this is the right place. But how does it feel to hear other people talk about their concepts of home? As, as the land that we reside on? Um, I think I, that it's their home too, but they just have a different understanding. Meaning? Meaning like they, they can have a connection to the land and appreciate the land and have a lot of love for the land, but I don't think that, like I think our connection is very different in that sense, so, I understand that it's their their home now and they live here and can have a lot of appreciation for it, but I just think that it's different. Yeah, I'd have to agree on that. For me, I know a lot of people are very proud of like their items, like their home is a big thing, their car, and a home rightfully so, especially in today's time, it's not easy to attain these things. But for us, it's something like we want to see, like in our home, right, we don't have any grass, so the dirt, how much land do you like, the dirt, the native plants, like those are the exciting things. The connections are sometimes night and day where people are really like, they want to obtain more buildings because to them that's home, that makes them feel powerful, secure and safe. For us, these open spaces make us feel secure and safe. Um, keeping those traditional ways. So I, I totally agree with her. A lot of people have migrated here over time and it is their home as well. But I strongly believe that they will never have a connection to this land as we do because literally our blood, sweat and tears is integrated in this land. 
Um, our roots are deeper than some of these oak trees that have been here 500 years. Like it's just many, many thousands of years that we've been here. And so I think for other people as well, when they're either displaced or they've had to move for whatever the reason, a lot of people are, we're having a huge migratory phase where people from all over are having to move. Having a place that reminds them a home or people that are welcoming as they would be in their cultures is so important. But I'm always urging people never forget where you came from because I, my grandma always taught me you have to know who you are in order to know where you're going. And I think that that is such a huge part of my life and home and I think that's really important for other people to remember also because they, they came from somewhere, they had some customs and some of these customs are really beautiful, amazing practices and just keep you really centered. Not to say that I've always been the most centered, but <laughs> I think it's really important to have those, you know, those memories and those pieces in your life. Because it's like a puzzle, right? We're putting all these pieces in the future. We know what's happened in the past. We know what's happening right now a lot of times. And that's what keeps us whole is having all these things. Since we're now here sitting and having this conversation, is there anything that you, any of you, would like to share that you think is important to say and to make, you know, to, to make a cross? Any message that you have that relates to home that you would like to share? Ooh, there's so many. I think most of all, um, really consider these lands, don't destroy them. Because <laughs> like I said, we have so many things, native plants that are going extinct that we're trying to save and, and revitalize. And it's so important because we never know what's going to happen as we know with these natural disasters. It might not have hit everybody hard, certain areas it does. But if we're ever in a situation that we need these things, we're not going to have them and we will cease to exist at that point. So I think to home and taking care of your home is taking care of the land, the open space, the animals. I know we often call it wildlife, but we term anything that's free wild. It's like it's free, they have their space. And to really consider this when thinking about projects is that we really need to think about sustainability over profit. Do you have anything to add? Nope, I agree with it. <laughs> uh, as I was hearing you talk also, what advice would you give to those people who are in the current structure in power um, about home? Mm -hmm. Well, we see as they're struggling, they're coming out with like indigenous food books. So again, we're reverting back to indigenous knowledge and the plants and anything around us that could be used to eat. So we always say the same thing. It kind of is circling back to us once again. And like acorns have become really popular. And in the last two years, other than that, I've never heard anybody outside the community speak of acorns. <laughs> I think also is a lot of these people in power are living in these really nice places, either on the beach or up in the mountains. And as we know, uh, our wildfires over the last few years have been really bad. And we're not telling people don't build here or don't live here because we were jealous or we think like there's a real reason why cultural burns need to happen and we need to figure this out and work with our communities. Um, because there's a lot that has to happen in a modern day society for to, to allow us to, to do these some of these practices. But it also benefits them just as well because nobody wants to go through a fire. It's pretty traumatizing and devastating to lose things or people. Um, and I think it's really important to note that not, not everybody you come across may have this knowledge and that's okay. Some people are learning, some people have other specialties that they work on, but to really reach out and concentrate with groups that know about these practices and can help sustain even the land that they live on. Because as we know, modern day insurance is not wanting to even take care of this. So there's a lot happening that's really, I think, helping people wake up or at least start to listen to maybe they do know what's going on or maybe there is a better way and now my last question 
is uh, any message you have for just the regular, not, not regular, <laughs> the blue collar, hardworking people from the county, um, anything um, that you can think of about home life? I don't know. I think for everybody, you know, that's working and, and some people are working really hard paycheck to paycheck, as we know, to just survive and have a home. Um, I would have to say, I, I gosh, this is really hard to put into words. Um, just not only to continue to what they do, but to get involved. There's a lot of groups and orgs out there that are really pushing forward to make change for the reg, uh, like so the regular or ordinary, if any of us are ordinary, right, people, um, to continue to move forward in these spaces because there are genuine people that are willing to help and that are wanting to work together to bring about, we're, we're like I said, there's a lot of change happening and we're on the, just like we're on the verge of a big earthquake, we're in the middle of a big shakeup to start changing things because what has been the last couple hundred years is not working and we really need to change this. We're going back to old ways, whether you want to say they're ancestral to here or other areas. These, some of these things really work. How are you both feeling about this conversation that we just had? I feel really good. I think it's emotional. I think it's a conversation we know we often have in our household and with tribal members. We just had a meeting on Monday of really, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, we're in a modern day society. We have to get a Native American attorney involved because we need help we need allies not it's not our words don't always come across as important if we don't have these stack of degrees then we need to call in reinforcements to say like hey this is what needs to happen because there's it's not cohesive this is not the way our traditional ways where we need to we need help and i think everybody it's okay to ask for help it's okay to admit that you need help um, and it's okay to seek it out, so to help things change, which is really important because our communities struggle with a lot in mental health, mental health, alcohol, and drugs is a huge one. And it's not just our communities anymore, as we're seeing, it's a lot of communities. People, we're, we're being like machines, we can only do so much. So I think the concept of home is to get into a more balanced situation than what we have currently.